Being able to make your own AI art videos just from text prompts is something that a lot of people, myself included, are really looking forward to. So when this Hugging Face app for Tuna Video came out just a couple of days ago, I was all over it. You might also have seen the Gen 1 model by Runway ML, which also allows you to visually edit existing video using a text prompt and looks very cool indeed. If we scroll down a little bit here, we can see a nice consistent video style being applied to the source video. However, Gen 1 isn't out for us mere mortals yet, so we just have to play with other things such as Tuna Video. If we take a quick look at the paper, we can see this is called One-Shot Tuning of Image Diffusion Models for Text to Video Generation. And straight away, we've got my very favorite thing. Yes, pictures. It starts from the training video, and there we can see by using a text prompt, the skier now has red clothes instead, or is a panda, or even an astronaut skiing on the moon, because why not? Great, so now we know what this thing does, it's time to actually do it. If you're looking at how to do this as well, there are a few ways you can run this for yourself. You don't even need to have a GPU, thanks to this Hugging Face space. As you can see, there are a couple of options here, one for inference and one for training and inference as well. If you're just looking to have a go straight away without needing to install anything, then dive straight into the inference space. That's the first one there with the little fish. Here, you can pick from any of the three models available there. You've got a man surfing, a bear with a guitar, and a redshift man skiing. Those are like the little model cards that we saw earlier there. And if you expand the model info bit and select a model, you can see the model that it was trained on there, mode D diffusion, and the training prompt, a bear is playing a guitar. So you can copy and paste this training prompt out of here, put that into your prompt, and then you could say something like a rodent is playing a guitar instead. And then you've got all these options to choose from down here as well. First of all, you can select a video length. I'd suggest around eight to start with and FPS goes all the way up to 12 there. But personally, I like it slightly lower. For example, there we can go down to four FPS, a seed, just a random number that you can pick. And there are also some other parameters there, number of steps, which you're probably used to if you've ever used stable diffusion and also a guidance scale. Essentially, you can just leave those the same and then click generate. If you can't be bothered to wait, there are a number of cached examples down the bottom here. So if we click on that, a man is surfing and the prompt here is a panda is surfing. That'll generate straight away because they are already cached examples. Then you can just click play. And there we see instead of a man surfing, we have a panda surfing. If you want to train your own model, then the training UE extends the inference UE with training and upload tabs. As you can see there, we've got run, so it'll do the inference, and you can also upload your model to Hugging Face afterwards if you want to as well. There's an option there to upload it automatically. So that upload there is just if you want to upload it afterwards because you didn't have that ticked. As this space notes, you can't run this in the shared UE, meaning you'll either have to duplicate the space and rent a GPU or run things locally. I, of course, will be running this locally, as once you've got it installed and running locally, you can edit things like turning that FPS up and creating more frames and all sorts of other things you can do if you edit the code yourself. But of course, first things first, that does need installing. And thankfully, it's super easy to install as I've got Anaconda to manage my Python environments, which is free. So you can download it and run it too, just from anaconda.com. And don't worry, all these links and things are down in the description right by the live like and subscribe buttons already. So in my Anaconda base environment, I just have to create a new environment for Tuna Video, download the app from Hugging Face, install the requirements and run it. Blam, those are the seven commands and we're up and running. Some things to note that on the first run, this will download Sable Diffusion 1.4 into that checkpoints directory if you're just using that default base model there. If you've got another diffusers model, such as your own custom model, then you can just put a link to that in the checkpoints directory as well. So there's the default one, the comp is Stable Diffusion 1.4, but I've also got the Runway ML Stable Diffusion 1.5 diffusers version in there as well. So I could train off either of those models. 
I also duplicated and edited the default app.py file because by default it includes a GPU warning if you're not using a T4. I'm on a 3090, so I basically just removed that text, which is, a, you know, it just clutters up the top of the screen, so I took it out. I also changed some of the maximum values for the sliders over in the inference, so now I can do much longer videos and do faster FPS as well. If we just quickly look back at those seven commands, you'll see the last one there. I'm setting an environment variable space ID equal to local. That's just because they've got a check in there that says, OK, is this space called tuna video? If it is, then I'm not going to run it because you have to duplicate the space. So there I'm effectively saying, OK, I'm not that space I can run. I'm bypassing this check. You can set an environment variable however you like. I'm just using bash there. So space ID equals local. You could set it in the Python as well or do whatever way you want to work around that block. Training is pretty simple. You'll just need to provide a short video. Three seconds is fine. So if we click there, that'll give us lots of options for videos. I've got a, a cat video there, for example. Let's just select that one. There we go with a cat video. Now we need a training prompt. So if I have a quick look and see what that training video looks like, we can see it's basically just a cat sitting in a tree and moving its head. Fairly simple stuff. That's quite a long video. You do only need three or four seconds. You'll then need a training prompt that says what that does. So in this case, it's got there, a man is surfing as the default prompt. So we can just say a cat in a tree that'll do and then you've got an output name for your model so we'll call that tree cat and a validation prompt we could say a dog in a tree so that validation prompt will basically generate samples we'll have a look at the advanced settings in a minute so you can see instead of the cat sitting in a tree you should have a dog sitting in a tree if we have a look at the training parameters here, we've got the base model. I'm just going to leave that at the default. Hugging face right token. That's if you want to upload your model to the hub. I'm not going to because I'm running it locally. So none of that really matters for me. But if you do want to upload it, just put your hugging face token in there, which you can get from the settings on your hugging face account. Now the advanced settings, all this is absolutely fine by default. Number of steps, 300. Learning rate, gradient accumulation, FP16. Use 8-bit Adam. Now, I tried that and it, it honestly didn't seem to make any difference to my VRAM, so not entirely sure if that works. To be honest, checkpointing steps, a thousand, that's fine. Just leave that really high. Um, if you do create a checkpoint, it's basically just a load of bin files, so I don't want to waste the space ever creating checkpoints personally, given that it only takes about six minutes to run through. Validation epochs, that's for the samples there. So the training prompt cat in a tree, name of your model validation prompt, a dog in a tree, that will generate a dog in a tree every 100. And then that's it, you're ready to start training. And let's click that now and start training some things. Now with those settings during my tests, training looked to take up to about 12 gig VRAM. It's on about 11 gig VRAM at the moment. It does pop up and down a little bit. And that's even with 8-bit Adam enabled, which seems to make absolutely no difference whatsoever. Apparently on a T4, this takes about 20 minutes to finish training, but on a 3090, those 300 steps took about six minutes. I did end up training a number of models, starting with their default actually, the man surfing, and I tested that with 300, 600, and 1200 steps. Basically, I did the 300 and took the config from their GitHub repo there. So they've got the GitHub repo there, and in the configs, they've got man surfing. So I copied all of those settings into, into this, made it exactly the same as that, so I could try and get my model exactly the same as theirs. I wanted to be able to replicate their results, basically. I also trained a couple of other models, including one where I increased the sample frames from 8 to 32, if we have a quick look at that YAML file there. So we've got the number of sample frames, 8. That's a couple of seconds in that video. It takes 8 frames. So I thought, all right, let's increase that from 8 to 32 and see how it does with lots and lots of frames. Okay, I'll just use the power of video editing and jump straight into the inference. One thing I found before you can actually run inference is that you'll need to move the model files up to their parent directory as this version of the code doesn't actually find the models in their default location. So here it is into experiments. I've got tree cat and because it's added this date stamp, it can't find it. So I'm just gonna cut that, pop it back up into the parent directory, paste into folder, Yes, that's fine, I can get rid of that. There we go. So now I've got experiments, tree cat, and then when you go over to the run tab and select local, 
reload model list, then I will see my tree cat down there in the list. The videos can't really be very long as yet, as you can see there in the video length, that's actually the number of frames. At the moment I've got it set to 24, of course the default maximum is about 12. For VRAM usage, initially this peaked at 21 gig for video creation, though it was 6 gig most of the time while running through the steps. I found somebody had already raised a similar issue in GitHub there, and their fix worked quite well. Once I'd added their suggested code, that brought the VRAM requirements down to around 12 gig. So if you've got a 12 gig card, I would suggest adding that code in there to the uh, pipeline underscore tuner video dot pi, and that will bring the VRAM usage down quite considerably. I started by trying to create their results. As you can see there in the model source, we've got the tuner video library, and I've got the man is surfing, and I'm going to create a, a panda in surfing, 24 frames, 6 FPS, that seed, other parameters there, so just the defaults, 50 steps, and a guidance scale of 7.5. If we have a look at their model, the output video looks like this. There we are, we've got the panda, all four seconds of him surfing, that's pretty cool. I think he looks quite nice, it's very well balanced on that uh, surfboard there. And if I do exactly the same thing, so local model, man is surfing, hopefully I should get exactly the same result. Is it the same? Um, not quite the same. Not quite the same, but it is fairly similar. It's it's in the same vein. It's close. Not quite sure why it's completely different, but it does the job. The other models I trained locally there are Surfing version 2 and Surfing version 3. Surfing version 2 is at 600 steps and Surfing version 3 is at 1200 steps. If we have a look at the 600 step model, so I trained this for twice as long, then we get a Surfing Panda which looks a little bit like this. Okay, so it's, it's uh, yeah, it's looking a bit weird there. And if we do it twice as long again, so this is the surfing version three, then we can see that yes, 1200 steps really is not all that good. Now the repository says that basically between 300 and 500 steps is good. And I would agree with that result from these tests as well. But let's have a look at that cat. Shall we have a look at the, the custom video? So I've got my cat down here, tree cat. This is the one we just trained. So there, I've got experiment tree cat, and instead of, let's have a look at that, a cat in a tree, I've now got a rat in a tree, because that's obviously what you want to do to all cats. Again, the other parameters, just leaving those the same. And how well has it done with our rat tree? Well, he, he looks okay. I, I think that's not bad. That's not bad, there we go. Got a rat in a tree instead of a cat in a tree, much better. I also tested with 10 FPS and 30 FPS videos on a different model where I'd increased the number of steps from 8 to 32. So that's over here, remember in that config file here, we've got the man surfing, got the number of samples uh, frames 8. So I set that to 32, so a lot more samples. I thought, okay, if I've got a lot more samples, it could make it better. Maybe it increases the quality or coherence and maybe I could generate longer videos. So here's the 10 FPS one which as you can see looks okay, it's it's a little bit jittery, and the 30 FPS one, yes that's very jittery indeed, still looks okay, obviously it's the perfectly normal speed for rodents to sniff at, right? As for what the best inference settings are from my testing, well, it seems generally speaking that the lower FPS settings are actually better, so somewhere between 4 and 8 for the FPS, longer videos, well, I could generate around 90 frames, uh, but it does seem to need some restarting. A lot of the VRAM seems to sort of get stuck at some point, so you'll have to start over again, free up some VRAM, and then maybe you'll be able to generate a longer video. The longer the video, however, the more VRAM it does seem to take. For the steps down here in the advanced settings, 50, absolutely fine. I also went down to about 25, 30, also fine. And personally, I prefer faster generations. The guidance scale does seem to make quite a lot of difference. 7.5 does seem to be the best for the most part. You can go down maybe to about 6.5 and up to perhaps 8.5. You should also note that the videos aren't saved automatically, so if you do find a, you've got a good video, you're like, oh yeah, I want that, don't forget to save it. 
Overall, you should be okay on a 12 gig card running this. You may be able to get away with a 10 gig card, but 12 gig card certainly. Uh, inference on eight frames used 8.5 gig for me. So the more frames you've got, the more VRAM you're going to need. It is very chunky. Each of those models is four gig in size and you can only do a few seconds of that specific video. Obviously you can turn that video into whatever you want, but it is just that one video. And while the output isn't bad, it's got that sort of slow stop motion feel to it. It looks quite good. That, that may not necessarily be your style. I'm, personally, I'm hoping Runway's Gen 1 will be really, really awesome once that comes out. So do stay tuned for that at some point in the future. Hopefully, I will get access and we'll all be able to use it. Overall, though, I think definitely worth having a go with and examining it if you're a nerd and if you're like me and you love playing with all these new toys. But for me, personally, the output isn't quite the quality that I want it. So I don't think any film directors out there should be worried that AI is going to take their jobs just yet. But if you enjoyed this Nerdy Rodent video, then why not try another?